in a moment, we're going to be ready to get this show on the road. This is the, the fight for the semifinals, right? It's not the end of the world if you are to lose here. You still move on into all the playoffs. You still get to play in front of the crowd, but you have an extra game under your belt. And sometimes that helps certain teams. Other times it works against them as fatigue will become a factor late into the tournament. But let's get the show on the road. It is the final day of the B stream as well. And we are so happy to be here. So we begin. Vitality starting on that CT side. Heroic on the T side. Let's go. And it's going to be a simple one for Heroic. They've already used all their utility in this round. And Kickstand is going to take a bit of presence up the B apartments. And they have complete jungle control. They've broken the murder hole as well. Of course, that'll be heard by Flamesy. Trying to hold a bit of a, a weird angle to deal with that one. But Sphinx has already found that one on Kickstand. It had to be a kill from Shush because he was carrying that bomb. But now he's kind of alone in those B apartments. And will look to jump away because his teammates still have that control. Nertz is searching for more. But Zyrus little lurking sandwich, and that's going to be rough to deal with because there's a pinch from CT, and Mezzi will find that one with a bit of help on that damage from Zyru. It leaves it all down to Shush and Tessa's beautiful tap from Flamesy, and of course, Zyru gets his one kill. Great CT hold from Vitality. Yeah, everyone gets involved. That's exactly what you want to see as well. All right, you know, having their moment. Great little teamwork coming through there from Vitality too. Sphinx is very good. His anchor duty is just to keep attention drawn for a little bit of time so Flames can pop, but on his rotate back over, gets his second. It was Zaiwu who spotted out that bottom comp play and it's Flames who punishes. So great work. Aurora can't really do a hell of a lot in that one. Just the one kill on Shush, and that is about that. And the first round should multiplying towards a second if we're being completely honest because there's no real buy here for a rubbing so to find this one would be definitely not what we'd expect looks like a pop out of palace in just a second and apex is here to potentially mow them down the flash is good they don't clear him oh no they're not clearing him at all so he just surely should be able to mop them up zaiwu for one he's trying to pound trying to deny that bomb no. he can't it's scrappy comes down the ladder and he falls thankfully the team are there to you know, clean things up. The last one of Tessus is barely alive, but yeah, Scrappy, it has to be said. I think Apex probably scratched his head a little bit. How did he not even get a kill? <laughs> There's nothing you can do but laugh about that, to be honest. We've all seen that in front of our eyes. And unfortunately, that is not something we're going to want to see again. But the only thing it does do, of course, which is, the, which is the main problem, is that he waits too long and actually allows him a plant for extra money. Yeah. So, issue that Apex plays it like that, to be honest. And I, I think he'll know that himself. I don't, he doesn't need me to tell him. That was uh, a bit of a blunder to give Heroic that extra cash. And look at the extra utility they get in the next round, thanks to that. Oh, dearie, what a way to start. Thankfully, they still win it comfortably, of course, with four players alive. Not the end of the world, but not ideal. It's got to be said, just getting that bomb plant, you know, you touched it. Having that little bit of extra use in the pocket, that could be that game changer. What is generally uh, a bonus buy here. Oh, Vitality. Early damage is great. Apex on the fadeaway. Gets one. The flash is fantastic. He lines up for his first. Looking for his second. He's been met with the flames, but speaking of flames, he'll go for two. Dexter gets a team kill to make matters worse. He's got to do it all alone, and Zywu will trade to the first gun round. Not going the way that they wanted or expected. Heroic is Vitality. 3-0. and Oh, that was a messy opening gun round. That wasn't exactly that complicated either from Heroic. It was mostly a contact with a bit few nades. You know, Molly's under Balks. Uh, basically a CT jungle and stair smoke, simple as that. And as you can see there, that's how the Degster team kill comes through. Apex does <laughs> Apex does do really well uh, on that occasion because he was kind of half blind going for that duel on the Tetris player. Um, and already done the damage to the other, of course. And Flames, he swung from that bench position with no molly, I don't think, on that bench position. Um, to absolute perfection. So great stuff from Vitality, early doors, heroic. In this following round, they're going for a strategy we've seen quite a lot of recently. Going for one player buying up fully and pretty much saving on the other four. So it gives you a chance to do something. But, of course, Kickstand is happy to go with a, probably a Mac 10 in that next gun round. Only got that hero, Galil. But, of course, now Nurts has grabbed that AK off of Sphinx. And Zyra was spotted more information as well. The kills are coming oh, no. through here for Heroic. And there is Nurse with that all-important AK. Suddenly, even though the health is awful, it's a 2v4. But Apex is on the flank. It's triggered discipline again. Surely he confirms two this time. And he Ooh. absolutely does. Mezzi got a nade kill in the midst of all that as well. Brilliant recovery from Apex. Yeah, he's just saved them from an embarrassing round loss there. Well played. Well played indeed. They needed a bit of a hero and he just stepped up to the plate 
things were rapidly falling apart there. And it wasn't even as much the, the Galil. It was the pistols who were getting super active in that round. So really well played from Apex. Nurse just needed to control that spray a little bit. And I think slightly flustered. He lets it slip. Four to zero. Ooh, for Heroic. We go back into a bye. Dexter out into the AWP. Only got the one kill to his name so far. Kicksan yet to frag. This has been a slower showing from Heroic at the gate, and it does really feel like they want to be taking this map. You know, of course, being their map pick, you want to get that strong start in towards this series. So far, not so good. The Seaside is struggling to, to get on the board. Yeah, and we know that they do struggle on their Anubis Heroic, which is the biggest issue. Apex had actually a really good start to this game now. He went from bot pecs in the first round to god yeah. pecs in the next two. He's having a fantastic couple. He will get taken down by Kicksand finally, but Flamesy is still here. And even though there are bullets getting peppered toward his position under Balk by Kicksand, who did find that opening. IGL on IGL. Flamesy still has a lot to say in this position. 50 seconds. Tess is not even showing from stairs yet either. Sphinx is helping, of course, from CT, and there's the Kill. Even dancing Ooh. with the ladder to try and find the palace player. That's super awkward, but in comes the damage. Still finds Dexter. Still finds Shush. Don't ask me how. 1v1. Kicksand gets the trade. It's Mezzi rotating in. In connector. Needs a spray down. Just about gets it. Nine health to spare. Mezzi, what a recovery. Yeah, big, big from Mezzi. Uh, an apex getting loud. That's exactly what we want to see. Vitality getting fired up. Starting to make rounds work. That round is won by Flames. How we get away with... You know, the first, fair enough, but the second and the third behind it is fantastic. How he stays alive there, I don't even know, but they swing in and one by one, they just get dropped and, uh, yeah, Flames, excellent job. It has to be said, A anchoring there. He's been very versatile, playing out via short, helping out towards B that time, helping out over towards the A site, maneuvering around the map and making his presence known. Apex goes under. One for one there. It's not terrible, but it's a gun dropped over, but then Flames and Sphinx can combine well safe now and that's exactly when vitality just at their most scary right because you've all you've had all your star players deal with the main threat on a it's you get it into a 1v1 finally if you're heroic and you think oh we have a chance now finally and you're met with mezzi on the rotation if you can rely on him in the clutch which you can so often do that's why vitality are in the upper echelons of competition at the moment really over the course of the year I don't think there's really been a team as consistent as Vitality and Na'Vi at this point. It was FaZe who had it early in the year. They've fallen off a bit. Mal's had a good streak of playoffs. Deep runs in playoffs. They fell off a little bit. They have a tough game against FaZe, of course, today now, do Mal's. But it's Vitality, especially after winning Cologne. I mean, that was a... I was lucky enough to be there. It was a beautiful final. One that Na'Vi will be looking back on and saying that's one that got away, perhaps. But true. If uh, they can find that Cologne form... We know what they're truly capable of. Exactly. Right, Attack ball's going to get gold here. Understandable. So we're going to get on towards the mic. It's six to zero. Vitality making this CT side look so comfortable. We're just not really seeing anything or enough out from this heroic side. They're not competing in the early rounds. They're pretty consistently losing the man advantage. But even when they do find that man advantage, they're not capitalizing on it. It's a tough predicament they find themselves in. Because if Vitality get any more than one more round in this first half, it might already start to feel like the beginning of the end. If they can get anywhere near eight, potentially nine rounds in this first half, surely you'd feel like there's no chance. This is kind of how I expected the game to start, to be quite honest. I We do know that these two teams are on different levels right now. As I said, I mean, Heroic did an amazing job to get through that close qualifier, but they need more things like that and more entries like that from Tessa. Sphinx was peeking, gets removed. That's the first, for like, proper opening kill we've had a chance to see. Other than that half-by round, where they had the 4v2, the Apex and Mezzi recovered. Proper gun round, they get a 5v4. Nade over. In towards mid, goes a little short, though, and Shush will pounce. He catches flames. That'll give Heroic... The opening double. They've lost from a situation like this before. And Apex going for that flank. It worked for him once. He got a 3k with it. And Zaiwu will activate as well with the AWP as Tessus gets clipped. And they finish is where we're going to go here. But Apex might have a bit of timing. He did make some noise. but So I don't know if they're going to keep an eye out for him. Nerds is 
sort of internally trained on this. Apex now starts to make a move. He does have the timing once again. Shush is here, but Apex only gets one. The 180 head on a swivel. Apex just can't confirm that second. And surely that's the round. It's Zaiwu. He's already got one. But a 1v3 now feels nothing short of impossible. Not in this spot. Smoke will fade in towards CT, but he has just no information. What's the setup? Where they're at? And I think it's just going to be a pretty simple save call close towards the site. Yeah, he got, he's got some money, and actually Vitality do have decent money overall. So he's sticking around a little bit closer, maybe looking to find one or two on the exit if they do go CT. But he's happy to save. Not even the Woo can do this one. And again, like, Apex has been so integral early game for Vitality with his quick flanks. That's the third time he's played Trigger Discipline on the flank. He gets his one, which is the more difficult one. And honestly, his target preference um, was the right one to try and get the player who was furthest away first. Yeah. But unfortunately, just couldn't react with that M4A4 spray on the second player close range. And that was the key. It would have been a 2v2 otherwise. Not to be on this occasion, but it's only one blip for Vitality. They still have everything they could want. Heroic. They get the opening kill and they'll finally convert one of those rounds on a gun round. Unfortunately, of course, kicks down on a MAC-10 in the following to prioritize utility. Dexter could have dropped him in AK. Mm. And that might indicate we're going for something fast toward B here. Oh. First flash will miss. That'll definitely change things. Mezzi needs to try and bail out his teammates. And it's actually Spinks who turns around for one. Looks for a second. He's in the flames now as well as Mezzi will try and get out in front of it. It's a little scrappy. Zaiwu's still here. Market door with this all Good for the first, but then a smoke will nullify that position and Flames started to make a move at the same time. It's a split back on towards this B side. Three versus three on the retake. Only Utah for Vitality. One flash, one Molotov. Two kits as well. Flames waiting for a chance. And Zaiwu and Flames both act to activate. That's two of them spotted. And Apex is not exactly being quiet in towards Kitchen either. So they'll know he's here. And in the Flames, he's got to dip away. They know where all three are. Time ticking. They've got to make a move on towards this site. Zaiwu left stuck in towards short. And surely this one's done. Oh, what a shot. And Apex will find his. They've got time for the defuse. I think it's going to yes. be tight. But they've just about got it. What a retake from Vitality. Oh, uh, those retakes can be so hard to gauge if you're a T side. And look, it's just the longer Vitality take, it makes Heroic shift around. It makes them uncomfortable. It makes them not know exactly exactly when they're going to move, when they're going to pounce, what timing they're going to move off on. And it just makes them so, feel so awkward. And Zyru, a huge shot to get them closer to that site, going for a late retake, even when they're halfway up already, is a shock for Heroic. Yeah, and that was that a quick just, shot. It's just a difference, isn't it? When, they, when you make those decisions, can catch off a T-side in those situations so nicely. Yeah, exactly. Another attack pause being called. And once again, we have to say very understandably why we're going for this. What a spot that we're in. Vitality, for the most part, looking very, very comfortable indeed. Seven to one. So already, you know, just hitting seven rounds of the CT side. That is a fantastic spot that you put yourselves in. So little we can really complain about. And a heroic sure we can go back in towards a buy, but you lose this round and you get reset again. We can be talking about vitality. Not only if they get the eighth here, more or less the ninth kind of comes part and parcel already. Nice opener, of course, just the Zywu classic as nerds get caught. He's struggling to get online. Yeah, that's kind of the thing I mentioned, right? Just against higher tier opposition, Nerds occasionally struggles a little bit more. Apex is kind of... I guess assisted somewhat by the flash there, but it doesn't work toward Tess there. Spinks unexpected to still be a window though. However, Shush will creep down the ladder and shock Flamesy. So it's a kill back, but it's still a two versus three. And even though they may have space toward A, Zyru is waiting that he knows that Heroic might have to go peeking for something, take an aggressive move when you're in a disadvantage. And comes the flash, but he's not going to be affected by that. And it's a headshot to boot on Shush. It's now down to leader Kixan. Can the captain step up for Heroic? First kill is a beauty on Sphinx. They now know he's in no man's land on the site, though. And Mezzi is coming in from this big flank. A shot from CT to fake it. It makes Kixan look towards Zyru's 
position and that's when Mezzi pounces. Perfect teamwork once again from Vitality and that's eight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is tough. The good thing is though, because that bomb plant did not reset, they will have the buy-in towards the next round. But even still, these buys aren't making that much of a difference. I would fantastic start for him and he just continues throughout the round, scaling up into it. And yeah, they just don't have an answer at the moment. They're getting caught off guard. They're constantly playing these rounds at, for the most part, a man disadvantage. Heroic are seriously struggling in this spot. Vitality already on towards A. I mean, they are generally gunning for double digits in this first half. If they find it, who knows what can happen? Oh, Tess says, no. he actually, him jumping is the reason he dies here. If he just walked out, he would have been covered by the smoke labored spray from Dexter. And he's actually coming off worse for wear. Flames will eventually fall nuts. Now losing out on this control. In towards apartments and the smoke will come down as well. So Spink just gets all of this B-site control. Look at this from Kickstarter. Yeah, he needs to do it. And low HP on Degster. So one player needs to take some control around the map. And this might be actually completely unexpected now. I think Apex did give this glance. He's going to go look for it now. IGL versus IGL battle. Kicksand wins it this time. But look how low they are. Zoro and Mezzi moving in together once again. There's going to be a smoke available for Topcon. That will mean that we can get that bomb down safely. This is a tough one for Vitality now. A nade to break open that smoke. They know that Kicksand could still be lurking around CT. Could be moving around to another flank position. Could have gone anywhere. CT is going around to B, but Dexter on that low HP. And Nade will find him. Three versus three. Kicksand is going to need to activate at some point to help Shush and Nerds. Vitality have been so good on these retakes thus far. Moving in, Mezzi. He knows he's been shot at from Tetris and he gets that beautiful shot, but now it's all Spinks. He actually doesn't have a kit picked up right now, which probably loses him this round. There is no time for this one. Kicks under just hiding will take it, even though there are diffused kits littering the site. Vitality took a little bit long that time. Better. Better from Heroic, right? And I mean, at the very least, that's something we could potentially work on. If we can get an A4 half out of the seaside, it's potentially salvageable. But we'll have to see. It started badly as well. But I think for me, the big thing that wins around is actually just kicks hands proactivity on the seaside. He moves through jungle, clears window spots, nothing, wraps in towards CT, finds an important kill on towards Apex. He does so much and he beckons over this rotate as well. Originally, they were setting up for what was still looking like a B here, but the second that kicks on, starts to maneuver his way in around A and gets a lot of freedom, he realizes yeah. this is actually where we should be going, so he pulls them all back. So that's a great mid to late round adjustment coming through from kicks on, and it basically wins on the round. So excellent stuff, but there's, there's no real need to worry just yet for Vitality. I mean, they still got a six round lead couple of things I will mention there is I am amazed Heroic has still giving up so many window picks on Mirage to Zywoo. Like, it's the most well-known pick in the game for an AWPA, you know, mid-window on Mirage. Uh, it's a bit unfortunate they keep getting caught off by that. And also, I will say, Spinks not having a diffuse kit in the end of that round there with 3.5k in the bank. Sure, they're a little bit rough on money here with Apex only on a CZ, but I'm surprised he didn't have that kit bought up. Anyway... This is a chance for Heroic. If they can deal with this round, 8-4 should be on the cards. Sphinx, he'll play. Up and towards short. Smoke down and towards top con from Nerds. Flame's going to try and play above it, but at the moment, nothing really working out. Gets a slight tag on towards Flame. Sphinx, got to activate. If you can get a double, that'll be huge, but it's not to be. Oh, Mezzi, he gets the support of Flames. What a timing for him to push through. And Zai Wu, at the same time, answers on towards Kicksan. Nerds, who looked like he wanted to start this round, now got to finish it at one versus four, and he has nothing really to work with. The first gifted over, and he upgrades to the M4 as well, which is nice, but he has absolutely no clue. Apex already has a CZ, may I say. This might change things a little bit, but he has oh, no bomb. No. The bomb is dropped in a less than advantageous position. He's now naded down to sub 50. Surely this round is basically one off principle. As long as Vitality play the discipline, there's no way they lose this. Zaiwu, with that all, holding in towards short as well as Apex going to rotate back in towards jungle. Nurse is a timer above his head here. 20 seconds, basically, to recover the bomb, pick a site, get a plant, and also avoid the players too. Now we miss shots. Apex or four, but they can now give up the bomb. It's a foot race towards Zed. It's one in which he might actually win here. Smoke going to come down. 
And a Molotov in towards jungle, so he does actually get given the luxury of a plant. One versus two, we're going to run in front of this as well. And well played from Mezzi. Make sure there's nothing gained in that one. And a ninth on the board, Trav. This is already feeling like it could be curtains in Mirage. They win the round, but there are quite a lot of micro errors there from Vitality. I mean, I don't know why Apex is shifting in toward window there with the CZ. Maybe he's just not judged the clock correctly because, you know, there's time to pick up that bomb and run up toward A. Sure, as you say, in the end, Mezzi just didn't need to respect that incendiary. I thought the stars were aligning for, for Nurts because he actually picked up that incendiary on his travels uh, to pick up that bomb. Um, and I had the opportunity, of course, to Molly. The... Uh, the jungle position, but incendiary suck in CS2. It's as simple as that. <laughs> so Mezzi could just run straight through it. Okay. Hicksam. Playing up close here. Flames as he starts to... Oh, oh, that's toe spotted. Yeah, he knows there's one there. Flash down. Beautiful. That was a, a small little thing. Flames just spots the feet of Kicksan. But shush, what are we doing? <laughs> Guess the first. Flying down Assassin's Creed style in for the second. V versus three. Round might be on it. Bomplon comes down as Sphinx starts to activate and he finds his. Looks for a second and Nerds will answer back. It's this back and forth trading and kills. The flash is not good enough as Mezzi will find his. The gun barrel of Zaiwu trying to betray him, but he doesn't peek out far enough. A dink, but Zaiwu with an O-scope, and that will be a 10-2 to two half. Trav, what a performance on Vitality. Oh, Zaiwu, 15-3. Would you expect anything less? Even the timing there to swing off of his teammate's contact. Like, Tessus was taking that duel against Messi for quite a long time, right? And does actually really well to clip him through triple. But Zyra, even on that low HP, knows when to push forward, knows when to go for that no-scope. And you know what? I feel like just Vitality do know everything about how they wanted to play this game against Heroic. And that game plan has been spot on. So close to taking it and to getting them, putting them one map away from those semi-finals. And of course, with the next map being Anubis, one that Heroic struggle on so much, you do have to question how Heroic are going to fight back in this series. We'll see you in a few minutes.
Well, it felt like a defiant showing coming through from Vitality. Everything, for the most part, that they wanted went right. And despite Apex looking a little upset there, it was a fantastic first half. 10 to 2. I mean, everything Vitality and in particular Zaiwu touched turn to gold. It felt like he never even lost a fight all the way throughout that. So, Charles, I don't know about you, but my chances of already getting back into this feel quite slim. Indeed, my friend, indeed. This has been domination thus far. Even if the half was 12-0, I think Apex still would have found something to complain about. But he's a perfectionist, and that's why we've got to love him. That is why Vitality can be so good. He wants everything to go right, everything to go according to his playbook. And the playbook and the pistol... There's a smoke toward that B-bomb site and a pounce together with two flashes. It's very simple and now Shush will get Goosh down, but Tess is still towards short, doing great work. Kicksand's now here to help as well and it's been deleted almost instantly. Apex is then stuck on towards Van and that is flawless for Heroic. Here we go. All right. Well, you know, if ever we were going to get back in towards this game and make a start out of this, that's probably the way to go about it, Trav. I mean, <laughs> we'll take that. But it needs to be so much more. We're talking about we need a pistol, the conversion here. We then need multiple gun rounds in a row just to be in for a chance. I mean, we know how small the odds are, but Heroica aside, that do find a way to be as, as an underdog in a, in a bad situation find some success so it's not completely impossible we'll be a nothing round even vitality a little bit of the old the classic the uh tack pause about calling a tack pause some people call it the existence tack pause where That's you just, a classic yeah just hold and wait and, you know a moment of a bit of conversation apex can sort of converse what are we going to do into all our, our next gun round what do we notice maybe from the pistol what are we going to notice here and how are we going to utilize that in our favor and i think at the moment for now as well as having this conversation they're probably trying to figure out how aggressive heroic like to get in towards mid that's a probably a big indicator yeah. of sort of how they're going to then approach that in towards the next round if they're going to try and fight fire with fire and try and get up in their face or if they're going to give them that space and then try and punish them on over extensions but for now heroic playing very disciplined I'm sure there's at least one person in chat who'll be like, oh my god, existence mentioned. Yeah. A goat from back in the my, day. My king. I can't remember. My when king. was the last time he played? I can't even remember. He probably, I think he was on Gamer Legion with Scream, if I remember yes. correctly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was that just as I was started commentating, actually, funny enough. Yeah, and um, I, I believe as well, obviously, he was on that G2, that failed next yes. edition of G2 with Smith when he came back to play for a little bit as well. Um, but yeah, anyway. The Glocks are eaten up, as expected. Dexter only had a USP in that round because he wants as much money as possible for the future AWP. Yeah, that taps away nicely, as you can see on the replays. I managed to deal with Tessas at least. Getting one is probably the maximum you could possibly hope for in a round like that. And now Dexter does have that AWP out straight away. What is the first call on the opening gun round for Vitality? Spam the corner of that smoke, just off instinct as... Nerds is pushing his way forward. Nothing here for now. Messi shutting up for actually that perfect model. It banks a little bit on towards the bricks below. So it is the right way to throw it. A lot of people do it on the fly, but that's the good way to go about it. Opener, four flames, space taken, but Messi drops. He gets spammed down through that smoke. Bomb gets planted. A bit of a push in towards CT. Dexter's here. Flames are going to need a flash if he wants to fight this. Going dry might just cost him his life, but he's going to wait. Patience of virtue. I get the support of Tessas up close, so Flames would have heard this. And speaking of, the Flames will tickle the toes of Spinks. Oh, oh, hang on. Flames and Spinks both get caught. Zaiwu now in towards under. Molotov in towards Firebox. But Zaiwu gets caught, and it's all down to Apex. Got to lead by example. And surely an impossible situation. Tail between his legs. He's out of it. And he does that's the right thing. It's, it's the cop-out choice, don't get me wrong, but it's absolutely the correct one because they had absolutely no money, of course. And if he saves that AK, he actually has the ability to drop one too, I believe. So that is uh, the correct decision. But unfortunately for Vitality, I would say they actually do the right things in that afterplot. And they play aggressive. They even had one player playing anti-flash there. That's just pure firepower and expertise from Tessez on the spray down. Judging it with the A1S, switching to the AK, timing Zywoo slightly. Um, now, something to work with for Heroic and some bank to fall back on as well. A buy straight back in for Vitality, like I said, but Nurts goes aggressive with the help of Shush's flash and a great HE into window sets up Dexter. Nurts will even manage to get two of his own as well in the midst of the madness. Suddenly, the round's pretty much done with 1 minute 30. Flamesy 1v3. Yeah, good luck, mate. We'll see whether he can, but 
Just kicks out up close. I don't know if he's going to clear this. So many different places to look, and it's a little bit of an off angle. That's one way of putting it. Nicely, yeah. <laughs> on top of that lamp. Kicks out. Nice angle, nice find. And he takes a tag to the toe. It's a weird angle to play, but I do love it. And in that situation, yep. it works perfectly. Great round again out from Heroic. And the yeah, Vitalities get nothing. They try and take that mid control and they try and overwhelm with numbers, but Dexter and Nurse just do so well at limiting the space that Vitality get. And, and very quickly, it's 10 to 6 Ooh. and oh, Apex. He's starting. To, I mean, all map he's felt a little, you know, on edge, doesn't he? Even at a 10 to 2, he didn't look happy about it. And maybe that's why he knows how fallible this sort of a lead is. As I said, he's a perfectionist. Oh, he's not going to like that one either. <laughs> no. To be fair, I think if Apex didn't act like that, it wouldn't be the Apex we know and love. True. So, you know, I think we, we need that. We need to see that passion, evident passion. And, uh, yeah, this is now getting a little bit more interesting. Vitality struggling on this T side early doors on the gun rounds. As you say, that fast mid call was. Uh, um, you know, not a bad choice, but what I really loved about Heroic, they, got to, they deserve the praise too. It's not just Vitality falling short, it's the way Heroic went about their peaks. They were Good. assertive, they didn't let Vitality run right and have mid for free, and Nurts fought for it with those flashes really well. And he's doing the same here, the main threat of this round has been removed. It's a lovely shot from Mezzi, but the trade is always going to be Ooh. there. Ridiculous reaction from Plainsy. But again, he is pretty much stuck. I'm going to get my opportunity to say he's more stuck than the stuck thing right now. He's got one player above him. He's got two players top con. And uh, all he can really do is stick in mid because he's held from three different angles. Yeah, it's the old rock and hard place. It's the question of which is the one that's going to get him. So, sure, sees it off. Very good round once again coming through from Heroic. They are ramping up on this CT side. And I love the way they're approaching it too. They're... Not sitting back and, you know, playing a little tensive off the back of what was a, you know, a pretty woeful first half. They are looking very clean in these rounds, and it's what, exactly what we want to see. You can't give the respect over to Vitality and just say, you know, I think for a row, they've got this thing in their mind of, you know, if they lose even just like one round, it could already be jeopardy a little bit in this game, especially in the early parts of this half too. But still, they yeah. came with aggression, they looked confident, and they're, they're playing this as if it's an even match, and that's exactly how you're meant to approach it. So, really good to see. It will be a pause coming through, and Exile's going to get uh, pretty vocal here, but things have got to change for Vitality. You've got to buy, thankfully, but lose this one, and we could be on for a potential tied game. Yeah, Flames is blinking a bit there. A, a strong blink. I wonder if he needs his glasses on or something, because uh, he's having a good game. Don't get me wrong, but I think uh, a bit of tiredness there creeping in. Perhaps for Heroic, they have one of the main factors, I think, with this particular series for Heroic is they have absolutely nothing to lose. They're playing one of the top teams in the world. We know it's just a fact that Heroic aren't there yet with this roster. And just historically, they seem to like it in Rio for some reason, of course. They made the grand final at the Major in 2022. Um, and of course made the same result happen last year, losing to Vitality in this exact matchup. Very ro different rosters back then. That was the Cadian Heroic. And of course, the Vitality with the Priya Magis. Can kick sound step up again? Oh, it's two. It's really good to get two as well from there. Usually it's a one and done position and Degster will find a second of his own. Vitality, this was their buy. What's going on? What's going wrong right now? Everything. <laughs> it's probably the, the correct way of putting it. My God, what a defiant round getting taken there by Heroic and it's now a two round game no bomb plan only the one casualty too so money is going to be really fickle over towards Vitality they are falling apart here Dex does really well it's a small angle to work with but yeah, he lights up. That round really does feel like it's one off the back of kicks and fantastic stuff from him. So just a single, I'll say the single, swings goes late in towards the Galil there as well. So we got mm. two rifles to work with, one premium, one not so much, but the Galil in the right hands is still pretty scary. Couple of the Eagles and a Tech Nine behind it. It is actually still a potential of a scary buy. There's armor all up around it too. So he's one of these buyers that you can't completely sleep on despite it being primarily pistols. Exactly. 
And it's the one, those sort of rounds are heroic. They can't afford to lose if they want to keep this streak going. Dexter, great find on Flamesy. Shush activates to find the AK of Mezzi, and that's the main threat removed. Who knows? Zyru's Deagle could still do something, but now the positions of Vitality have all been scouted out. They're forced away. It's a comfortable 5v3 for Heroic. And Vitality, without a single round on this T side, worries and nerves and stress will start to creep in. It's an error from Tessez, but there is still a long way back in this round. Nurts is going to peek, but hang on. He peeks into a combination of Apex and Zywu, and it's a 3v3 out of nowhere. This round might be on. Degsa. I like this, though. He's going for an information play, and actually, if he sets up in just a second, he should have the clear advantage here, and he does. Apex will fall. Bombs on the back of Zywu, and he... We'll reclaim a little bit of that space. He continues moving forward, so he might try to catch Dexter off guard. He's opted oh. for the Deagle in that fight against the AK. And it doesn't work out. It's Sphinx left all alone. There's a lot of angles he's got to clear, and surely it's a matter of time before he gets caught. One towards short, one towards jungle. Nice shot. And actually, he gets the cross. He spots one in towards that right side. Time is ticking. Gets another kill as well. I just don't think he has to time it. He has to get the bomb. Nope. And he just can't get on towards the site to get this plant down. As long as Kicksand doesn't peak, that is the round. And he will hunt a little bit late on. But Sphinx picks up an AWP. And that's as good as it gets. Heroic. Make it a one round game. Wow, I can't believe we're here after that first half. Dexter does a good thing in the end, to be fair. Now switching to the AK for that duel against Zyra gives him more yeah. maneuverability. And actually seeing the flick from his POV against Flamesy was pretty tasty. Vitality make it expensive, but making it expensive doesn't really matter at this point. Heroic have built up so much money that you know, killing four doesn't really matter. Look at the cash in reserves Heroic still have. The gap is one. Vitality back on the buy. Of course, Mezzi buying up that hero AK in the previous round means that he has no utility in this one. But they do have that AWP saved thanks to Sphinx. That is something, but they need to do something with it. You're goddamn right. This is a round that has to be taken. Just to remind you, or maybe for those who are joining us a little late, this was 10 to 2 at the half. Look where we are now. Snuck down into Wars window. What a game we're getting here. This felt like it was going to be a walkover for the first. Zywoo, he actually might have been spotted there on the spam. He is, and yeah, Tessis wow. is very well. Breaks open just a quarter of that smoke with the M4 spam. And he'll get his kill, and Shush having a little look in as well. Will he clear the toes? No, he gets cleared as Mezzi. Patience pays off for him, and Apex is going to activate for one of his own as well. Smoke down towards jungle, and Dexter starts to try and make a move up. He should get one, and he does. On towards Flames. Oh, your seconds as well. Sphinx now holding. He has to actually just fall off the angle a little bit. So a reposition. No smoke for Vitality. That's what I'm worried about right now. They have four flashes and a molly. But it's obviously getting the bomb up con, which is so dangerous. Sphinx is going to try and plant it now. But Tessa should have a freebie. It's not been cleared. It's a spam from Mezzi to find it. Two versus two. Vitality have to find a way to deal with this. But as I said, utility running low could be such an issue. And that is some shot from Dexter. It's all Mezzi. Can the Brit step up when needed? Vitality dry on this. T side, not a single round found. Can Mezzi do it? Oh, he tries to isolate one duel first, but Kixan is faster. We are even at 10 apiece. I can't Adam and Eve it. <laughs> Eight rounds in a row out from Heroic. What a CT side we're seeing out from them. And the way they're playing, it honestly looks like they could go flawless in this half. They are having a whale of a time. And we're just not seeing anything out from Vitality. They look flat. They look checked out of this game. They're not playing even remotely close to what we saw in that first half. And they're a complete shadow of their former selves. And Heroic are punishing them for that. At the very least, with that bomb plant and with the loss bonus, of course, we can just rebuy back in. But buy or not, it's not making a damn difference. Heroic are in complete control of this game. Flash over. Zywoo trying to set up flames for that first. They will slowly start pushing their way into a bit of mid control. And Heroic going to give it to them. The biggest thing for Heroic, of course, is they've managed to keep this up while Vitality have had so many opportunities on these half investments, investments with one or two guns, full loss bonus has been in play for so long now. It's actually so impressive. I, 
can't believe we're here. But Vitality now have all the pressure on their shoulders because it's Heroic who have put their foot down on the CT side. have been impenetrable Apex as he creeps through the palace smoke. He wants to with the push-up con. Maybe this is the strat to finally work it out, but here come the fight backs. Oh my word, Spinks is a huge headshot and kicks on. Absolutely massive. And now in a four versus two, Vitality could have finally found the formula, but I think Dexter and Tessis will still give this a look. As we said, that Spinks kill in towards jungle, that feels like the one that potentially will be the success factor of this round, right? That's what we're going to look back towards. Dexter, how's your flick? Not bad. Zai, we will get caught. Like you said, even though it's just exit kills, they're actually going to do quite a bit of damage. They've got so much money to work with, so why not? Okay. Yeah, we're not giving up just yet. There is the smoke. Molly in towards Ram. Flashbang going to come out as well. Tap on towards the bomb. Knife out. Oh. Flames. He's looking the wrong way. Surely not. He gets off the bomb. And that'll be that. That is the round, but it's not exactly going to be without a fight. Flames will fall to the bombs. Already one staying alive. It is going to be a little expensive. That has to be said. But finally, Vitality final round. It is... I, I, wouldn't even say, I won't even say a long time coming because it hasn't. These early rounds have been yeah. not even competitive at all. That one was a lot better. Oh, I mean, there's two massive kills in that round that would completely change everything. You mentioned the Sphinx one towards jungle. The fact that Flamesy managed to spam down the ticket player through ticket box as well is, is so yeah. critical. And they yeah, back into the lead only just by a sliver. And I thought for a second we might get something incredible from Tessa. It's worth an attempt with the money they had. I really do appreciate it. So many teams would save in that scenario. They try and make it as expen expensive as possible for Vitality. And it does make an impact. Apex only on that Galil. And utility, enough, but not perfect. Mid control in. Window smoke in. Apex close. Looking to maybe boost silently rather than going for the bench strafe. But look who's waiting. It's Tessas again. He might only be at 15 and 18 in this game, but he's had so many critical moments and multi-kills to recover rounds. X-ray turns off, so you can perhaps see what he sees, but it's a brilliant reaction. 5v4. Massive. Apex. Waiting as well. It looked like he wanted to try and go for a trade, but it's not to be. Smoke drops in towards Khan to give him that clearance of the cross. Degta takes a hopeful pop shot, but it's not to be. Swinging towards Sandwich. Shush. We'll get his. Looks for a second as well and delivers. And it might be more behind this. Flame's got to go huge. Basically, it's a one versus four, and he already gets the first. Oh, my. 11 all. We're back. The full 24 needed in map number one, Trav. This is the game that we were hoping for. Ah, heroic, man. I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed. This is kind of really not the heroic we've kind of seen this year, especially with this roster. Sure, they've had so many, you know, issues with Dexter's Visa, for example. It feels like they haven't been able to get comfortable in these big events. But as I said, they always seem to ramp up at Rio. Finals in their last two appearances here. Never failed to make that grand final, incredibly. <laughs> really, any roster they've played until now. And even then, there's still an opportunity. Of course, this is the battle for the semi-finals. To remind you guys, loser goes to the quarters, winner skips around and goes straight to those semis. You'd expect it to be Vitality, but with the buy they have in this one, we could at least get overtime on this first map for Heroic. Absolutely. Don't count it out just yet. Setting up what feels like this... Very important B contact play. One AK, three Tech Nines, and a P250. Not quite the make or break round, but if Vitality were able to take this, it would absolutely change things up. It would give them that chance of taking this in regulation as we felt they probably would at halfway. Kicks on. One only. Mezzi on the drive by with the Tech Nine, but Nurt and Tessas will double down. Wow. Make that three for Tessas. No, sir. B site is closed. Locked. And that'll be that. It is map point for Heroic on their map pick. And what a recovery from 10 to 2. There's one thing I thought I'd be saying in this game is not map point heroic after they were 10-2 down. And this CT side has been unreal. And don't forget, the only round Vitality won on this T side thus far was a struggle. It took some kills that may not have come through every day of the week. Incredible work from heroic. Dynamic, aggressive. 
As I said earlier on, playing with nothing to lose and there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't play like that when you're up against the favourite as the underdog, when you know you have your playoff spot confirmed already, give it your best shot, do some more wild calls perhaps that catches off an opponent that maybe they're not expecting. I wouldn't even say it's been anything too necessarily wild though, just pure aggressive CT gameplay that Vitality have not found a way to counter. That's for sure, they've been struggling. Nerds. I like this. He's moving his way forward. It's flames on the other side as well. He's got a bit of a gap. He'll get his and he'll get out. I love that. Doesn't stick around for the potential of the trade. Completely will give up that mid control as Apex starts to make his move through lower. But it's, it's, it's too little too late in that sense. So Vitality basically playing this round out from a four versus five. But Apex activates well. Takes a lot of damage, sure. But his kill is uber important. I love this from Tessas. This might work in his favor. He goes back in towards mid. He spots nothing in towards lower. He now holds over towards Delpan. Zywu spotted and he will just dip back in towards connector. I wonder if Tessez knows if that's Zyru or not, or at least if it's not Apex. Because obviously they've already known that Apex got that kill in that position. We know that teams are gauging who's there off of gloves at this point, as we saw yeah. from FaZe and Liquid the other day. Zywu, oh, he's missed his duel. He's missed his no. duel. It's all falling apart. Spix is 14 HP. It's a gorgeous headshot. Yeah. But Dexter will remove him. 13-11 heroic from a 10-2 deficit. Someone put out a search warrant for Vitality. They are missing. Yeah, my God. What a response. How in God's name have heroic pulled off that sort of a recovery? What a crumble reset. And it's just not an easy thing when you're 10 two up and you lose 30 and 11 you get just one round in the second half to just say the easy words of right just mentally reset let's just go again let's play it like it's a, a map one it's not that easy pistol underway degster p250 kevlar as we always see from the orb as it feels like on these pistols flame z all run down by nerds but guess who's here and guess who's being baited in it's zywu arguably the best duelies player in world counter strike he's good at many other things as well but the duelies he never seems to fail to get a kill yeah mine don't act like that i'll say that for free <laughs> he makes it look so easy as he not peeking just yet he might take a jig oh, he Swings out, spots two, and thankfully doesn't take that much damage that he can just completely fall off, but he will relinquish E-Box control. Off angle. On that plat position. I've seen Mezzi have some brilliant plays around that position in the past on this map, but they're going to allow Kickstand to get this bomb planted in the three versus four, and Dexter has stopped Sphinx and tried to make his way through. Maybe that's ill-advised. And more tags coming through on toward Apex. He has crept through toward Plat, and actually that's a very nice clean headshot from Apex. No defuse kit, so Vitality do need to hurry up here. And if Kixon and Shiv can somehow play time, it could be possible, but they'll both get run down. And that's a critical retake for Vitality. Yeah, okay. All play, they needed it. Starts well, finishes well. Zywu comes alive as well, three kills to his name, and... Apex sitting are so pretty active as well. But you know, we already know that getting a strong start and getting a good first half, in, especially in the, the scope of the series, is not enough, right? We need to see that consistency all the way throughout. Heroic are getting a bomb run out there. That could facilitate a buy. Some teams do like to force buy off the back of this. And this is what they're going to go for. Triple Galil set up. No, I'll take a lie. They kick down a sell off and he'll go for the MAC 10 instead as he prioritizes just a tad more util in this spot. So we got. Three smokes, one molly, two flashes, and one of those smokes already used. They might have to go for a completely quick round here. Uh, Mezzi for the first, holding that mouse one, but Sphinx going to get overwhelmed. The reload needed for Shush as well as Kingsan trying to close down, but he gets the support as Zywu and Apex also find their moment. It's still a two versus two. Oh. Made that one versus two. It's all down to flames. He's only got an MP9. And two Galils on the other side. Tessis has gone absolutely massive in towards this round, but has no the bomb. bomb. They fall back and they're waiting for a flank that isn't going to happen. They still have time, though. Yeah, I'll one minute 15 to figure this out. And Flames rotated in. Tessis and Dexter have just frozen. They're convinced that Flames, he's going to have to be the one to go looking for information to make this clutch a possibility. The longer that time ticks down, the longer 
both teams are going to second guess themselves. Flame Z is now going to get swung. It's going to be a double peak. Tessus is waiting, and that is very well dealt with by Heroic. Just the, the pause and the freeze can work so often sometimes. And even though Flamesy was in the right position, they win the aim duels with those Galils, like you say. And in the end, that sight defense for Vitality falls apart. Mezzi does probably the best he could possibly do in that round by getting one and then just dancing around the pillar for as long as possible to get all of his teammates in position. But in the end, Tessez does God's work to remove them all. Yeah, exactly. Fantastic response as well. And it just shows the importance of that bomb plant in a T-Sap pistol round, even if you are to lose it. The advantages it can give you with a buy, and if you win that buy, I mean, look what has happened now. Vitality, they have to force themselves in that double eco scenario, of course, but what they bring to the table here isn't exactly all that fruitful, unfortunately. And we've got a CZ, a 5-7, and a few Deagles asking a lot. Against what is a double AK, one M4, one Galil, MP7. A nerd of an MP7 is basically a premium rifle. He's so good with that gun. As, you know, I speak <laughs> the devil and he shall rise is exactly that. He gets two as well, so fair play. Yeah, nicely done. Could even get more as well. Mezzi, it's a lovely shot. And you always got to be wary of the woo, but Nurse will make another MP7 shot sing. And that's what the MP7 actually is very good at. Those mid-range bursts, very accurate. Swings hits another banger, and hang on, Mezzi has still gone unchecked. 2v2, not beyond the realms here. Of course, all Sphinx can now, but is that lost MP7? And Degs doing kickstand will very likely know there is no diffuse kit here for Vitality on this rebuy back in. But there is a smoke available to right click onto the bomb and an upgrade for Sphinx on the AK. They're going to have to fight for this. Oh. Gap in the smoke though, and Mezzi's found another one dig. That's three in the round. It's all kicks out. Now he's been spotted out too. They need to get on this defuse. Kill comes through, but there's no time for it. They may get all the kills, but Heroic get away with it. Oh, that's a sigh of relief. That's a sigh of relief. Mezzi does so well, so well in that round. And Nurse gets very vocal as well. He is <laughs> just making sure the pressure stays on the shoulders. I mean, great work from Mezzi, I think, individually. But I think the big thing is the heroic take the round. That's all that they ultimately care about in that spot. It will mean, uh, you know, a buyback in. But of course, a Vitality has two saved guns, which is a big thing for them. Sphinx, AK-47. Zaibu with a Deagle. Mezzi with a Deagle as well. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Mezzi play couldn't be completed. He does amazing work to get as many as he did with the Deagle. And the Deagle does feel like it's been given an ever so slight buff, of course. A silent buff when the, with the movement. Feels a bit more accurate when you're running now. Um, I had the opportunity to try it, of course, a couple of times. And it's weird, but I think it is definitely a significant difference. We know the 5.7s are still so good, but Deagles could be a bit more prevalent and get a few more kills in these sort of buys in the future and in the present. We'll see if Mezzi and Zyru can do something with it this time. Nice little setup here for Spinks with that AK. He needs to be the one to deliver, of course. That's us. He'll be first contact. Swing. And a final. One for one is not terrible. Spinks with this gun. We turned it out by the MP7 on the move. That's again making that gun work so well. The upgrade now to the AK-47. And with this B-side taken, the yeah, A-side taken, I'll say, there's surely no chance. I mean, we'll maybe be looking around for an exit, an upgrade. Potentially, it'll be lovely. If we can kind of scoop up an AK and just take it into us next round, that'll be a real nice positive. And Apex has just slipped by. Shush will double back. He's spidey senses tingling. He knows there's a possibility and great due diligence just to keep hold of that flank, just in case anybody tried anything sneaky. So yeah, heroic. A simple third put on the board. They've got to make this seaside very, very strong. I mean, obviously that was the big conversation. They've already done better than they did in Towards Mirage in terms of the T side. They only got two rounds in that first half there. We'll start this map off with three, but if I'm being completely honest with how T side weighted this map is, we're probably looking for them to get I would say probably at least seven, I don't know if you'd agree. Yeah, quite possibly. Quite possibly. And you know how we're speaking about these advancement matches where winner goes through to the semis, loser goes straight through to the quarters, mm. and, you know, playoffs are guaranteed either way? Well, Furia have taken map one over Navi. The Rio buff for Furia 
is truly coming into play, perhaps. They're one away from going straight through to the semis. Can you believe that? That would be huge, wouldn't it? That would be massive. That is something Fury can do. The Rio buff, it obviously is a thing as well for Heroic, it has to be said. So both the, the Rio buffs working out well. Drawing first blood in their respective series. And Heroic looking for that 2-0. The way they're playing so far, I might just be on the card. Kicktan, this is bold. This is very bold. Kicktan, uh, maybe a little bit too bold. He overextends <laughs> and basically dies. He had two points of HP and Apex just connects with one bullet. That left us scratching our heads uh, a tad. Rough start for Kicksand in this one. And I know it's been a long, long time now, but the one map that Kicksand did have incredible calls on, I know it's cooled off since. It was Anubis. So when he was on Apex, it was what, what, the one map which I felt like, yeah, had some really good moments on. And kind of made a name for himself as almost an entry fragging IGL towards certain portions. Look at Apex. Look at Apex. <laughs> Nerds has no clue whatsoever. Shush does well to win the duel against Spinks, but he knows where Apex is, and he's done amazing work there to find three kills total. And it leaves Dexter lost in the canal. Not a nice place to be. This should be done here. I mean, it's actually more about kind of keep out of this orb. And even that might be a little bit of an ask. Apex, right idea. Dexter starting to... Move back around. His gun barrel might betray him, actually. In all fairness, the no scope connects, though. Good work. 15 seconds to try and stay alive. It's Zywoo moving their way through spawn. I mean, obviously, the round itself is done. It's just about can this gun stay alive? If this stays alive, we're buying around it, no issues. I mean, we would have a buy regardless, but it might not facilitate an AWP in towards the next one if he was to fall. And yes, he's given that luxury. So it's Vitality, you get a second. In a very good round from them, it has to be said. And it's still not job done in terms of vitality in making this a competitive start for them on the CT side. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think the big question mark for me just still comes down to Kickstand's play there. Very weird. You know, just, just in towards the mods of it. It's like 98 <laughs> points of damage or something from it. My guy woke up feeling dangerous today. Maybe a bit too dangerous to his own fire and flames. Yeah, self-dangerous. You know what I mean? It's like no, <laughs> to no one else. He's 0-4 right now, but... Yeah, I'm afraid that is a factual statement. Right. Full gun round for Heroic back in with the Dexter AWP in play, but very low utility. It's mostly on Dexter and Tessez here. Kicks and Nerts have nothing to work with, and Apex is once again trying to go for something a little bit more aggressive. Spinks always in the smoke. There's a player right next to him, though, and Tessez gets the vision first as it fades. Mezzi now a lot on his plate. He can't even react for the one, even though Tessez is half blind. Heroic will overrun B, and Zywu is running for those hills. Shush. He moves forward in towards Spawn. That's a very lovely tempo shift that comes through from Heroic. They just step up the pace, and it works, and it works so well. Three saving. We're just going to turtle up a little bit over towards his A side, and it, it does feel like Heroic are actually going to give them that. I'm not seeing too much of a hunt here. Shush was holding for the potential of any sort of a late round play, but yeah, it's not happening, so... Good response from Heroic. A needed response to plenty more that needs to be done for us to get comfortable with where this game is, but they could trade out on towards Zyra at the end. I mean, that'd be pretty important, but they're going to opt against keep and hold of what they've got. So it's a slow end to the round, but it's Heroic who extend the lead to two rounds once again. All right, keeping it simple early doors here. Of course, I mentioned their previous results on this map. It was it's been a little bit of a struggle against high tier opposition. And even though they've played it double the times of Vitality in recent times. I said, of course, they lost it last time out against MIBR. Any team of note they've beaten lately. Uh, teams actually in the qualifier for this very event. 3D Max and Bait. They were both went the full 24 or more. So... It's not one of their favorites. So this would be a turn up for the books. Then a shadow of a doubt. Not just map one, but map two as well. Flamesy going aggressive. Great flashes coming in from Zywu. But he doesn't see Nurt on his left. That's very surprising. Spinks going aggressive. Needs the spray. Gets the spray. But kicks and will land on him and remove him. 3v2. Another advantage for Heroic. As he oh, backside and Zywu tries to move and Dexter just waits as that... Kill comes to him and Messi. I mean, he's got 
Nothing left to do. Bar try and make a move, and he does a bit of damage on towards Shush, but that'll give away his ruse. And the bomb can just run all the way towards a it's a foot race, which Messi can't even partake in in this sense. And it's gonna, yeah, like you mentioned, another round going the way of heroic. And Shush going the safe route as well through carpets. That'll be that. He does have the support though, and Dexter oh. is a lucky man. Molotov will come down, but both ways, so that just limits Mezzi giving this one a go. I'm not sure if he's still going to try and have a look in, because he just doesn't have a kit. If he had a kit, potentially, kit, smoke, double flash, it's and full HP, it's a potentially serviceable retake, but I think without that kit, he knows that this is just not a possibility, so back he falls, and... There it is. Yeah, heroic. Yeah, exactly. There it is. Heroic, okay. another round for them. That kit was on the back of Zai Wu as he got caught by Dexter. If it's a two versus three and Zai Wu says alive, who knows? But a great mid-round call to just pull Shush away. Back over towards A and kicks and says, let's finish here. Five to two. I'm liking what I'm seeing, Trav. I'm liking it a lot. Yeah, I think even if Mezzi may have taken the kill on Dexter quickly, he would have been fast on that flank and maybe at least given it a look for more aggressive exits. But as he knew Dexter would still be there in around that position and maybe have even teammate support, uh, it was the right thing to back away. And Mezzi hasn't really had a chance to uh, do much on these rotations yet, of course. When they've come toward B, he's either got, got one and died or struggled to deliver. And uh, to be fair to him, he's been put in tough situations. There was one, of course, where he was alone and he was getting pinched by four players. Not a nice position to be in. No. So, I know that's, that's kind of been happening all too often for Vitality on this CT side. And honestly, Anubis is a map right now where you have to be so proactive on this CT side. Obviously, we know how T-sided it, it can still be. You know, casters like us are a broken record when we talk about that, but for good reason. Um... But there are so many things you can do now to put into practice on the CT side to be more proactive, be more assertive. We saw Flamesy try and give that a go, but not reacting to Nerts, kind of put an, put an end to that play outside A main. And then when they tried to drop Spinks into Canal, that didn't work too cleanly either. Just mistimed, it felt like, when they actually tried something like that. I just, just, just described. So, yeah, Heroic kind of needing all the right situations at the moment and getting the answers correct. Vitality's buy is not great in this following round either. Just a half. On towards that smoke. There's actually okay amount of damage towards Zywoo. Two rifles, one MP9. A Caesar out of the Deagle. Not the easiest buy to try and convert Nerds. How's he going to be utilized here on the entry? Molly and an A combo, it seems. Flames up close. He'll drop an A of his own as well. And Nurt eats it up. Mezzi for one. Instant response as Flames with pounds, but the trades generally would benefit the T side because they have got numbers towards A, but they're not activating just yet off, off of it. I mean, Apex, he's come back and he's picked up this MP9. And Shush now got all of mid control to himself. Yeah, that's so awkward for the MP9 in this position. That's such an uncomfortable duel to take with that SMG from there. Especially on a headshot angle. But the rotations haven't really budged too much still. You're absolutely right. We're staying stock solid at the moment for Vitality. Spink still in a position not to help at all. It's going to have to be all Apex, and in comes that Molotov. Oh no! Oh no! Dexter! Oh, imagine if Apex won the duel against Shush. That would have been ridiculous. Kicks out and runs straight in front of Dexter. Thankfully, Shush has got a good angle in mid here, so I will check it, but it's easy for Shush. And now it's Spinks, one versus two. Shush should really go down here and will. And now it's all down to Dexter. He's switched to the AK for more maneuverability, and he's positioned himself in toward that heaven position, not peeking properly yet, waiting behind that smoke, waiting inside of that smoke, and Spinks is making noise, and he has to tap this bomb pretty quickly because there's no kit in play, like we said. Dexter seems to have this one in the palm of his hand. It's a 10 second hold, easy headshot for Dexter. Six on the board for Heroic already. Yeah, a big error from Dexter as well. He just reacts and deletes his teammate. And it absolutely nearly threw that round. It has to be said, <laughs> but thankfully not to be. Good attempt from Vitality in that one, but it's just not enough. If they had a bit more firepower, I mean, oh. it doesn't make even question why he even actually commits to the fire. I think he's probably expecting kicks out to fall. And he kind of kills him as the body's dropping, but doesn't matter. A round win is all that we care about in this situation. Smoke towards mid as Dexter will hold. Not made his presence known just yet. And now he will take his shot to no avail. 
We're back into full by for Vitality. If they don't win this, this could be a very troublesome first half, as was that final half of Mirage. Yeah. I think anyone, maybe who missed that first map, I'd urge you to go back and have a watch of that because that was a ridiculous recovery. And look at this boost for Zyro. This is really nice. It's obviously risky and he might just have unscoped at the wrong time. And that is so unfortunate for Mezzi. Can you believe it? He's boosting Zywu. He's trying to set his mate up. He even has to crouch to let Zywu off silently. And while he's doing all of that, he just gets owned by Shush. King Mezzi thrown now in the bin. And Apex is alone in mid right now against three players, perhaps. Apex moving forward. They're holding... All this aggression, do they clear? As he swings out, left eye peak, he should lose! Oh my god, kicks on. Asleep at the wheel there for a second. Then he gets caught. Thankfully, the trade is good and, of course, keeps the numbers in favor of Heroic. Something they've been doing excellently all the way throughout this T-side. Mid-control taken. If they just go towards B, it's a free site where they're going to try and test A. Everybody from Vitality here to meet them. The first is good. The trade behind it. We're back into a two versus two. They should now know that both of them are here, but it doesn't matter the bombs drops. So they've got to start moving. Nerds, great shot, but Zyru will answer back. Time ticking, five seconds. He doesn't need to peek. Shush, trying to flood in towards his position, and that's it. Oh, he wins on the last second there. But that is a misread from Heroic. They go to the site with a three. We're stacked up. Holy Macaro. I how Z I'm amazed Zyru has stayed around toward heaven so long there. Once he hears you know, him getting trampled down there, elephant footsteps, surely he just drops onto the site to play extra safe. It only just ticks over to zero. But when he uh, tried to go for that no scope, my god, that is way too close for vitality. Thankfully, Zyru's internal clock and clock above his head, he reads both well. But again, look at the buy Vitality are going to have. They've won the round, and the buy is abhorrent. It's disgustingly bad. There's one M4. And Heroic know that. Yeah, this is tough. So it's, it's a rough round for Heroic to, to lose, but I think they've still got primarily basically all of the advantages to work for in this situation. Like you mentioned, just that one premium gun for Vitality makes this a very difficult spot. If you lose this as well, money broken, that would be heroic. Seven and then the eighth sort of gifted over as a bit of a cherry on top. Dexter, be careful, my friend. Thankfully, a shush to support him there in that endeavor. The one rifle, good for the shot. Lovely, and he gets the second behind it. No, not the third. How has he gone untraded there? And Spinks is still alive. Not for much oh, longer. Tess says, <laughs> yeah. A good answer back, and it's just a two MP9s to recover now. Tessas has been so integral for Heroic in this round, and in this entire best of three thus far. He was one of the players under so much pressure in terms of you know numbers falling off in recent times for Heroic. He's been unbelievable in this event in particular, and today. And Flamesy and Zyru back to back in mid. Tessas is going back to collect everything he possibly can, including the orb, including a full belt of utility. I can't believe that Spinks gets three. He was falling off the brickwork there and managed to adjust the spray for that third. So unlikely. But they needed that. And that heroic three-piece from Spinks might not even go rewarded. Zywu big flank. There is an AK on the floor he can switch to, but he might not want to make a sound cue just yet. It's been called, and they're going to choose not to make the sound cue. They're still not even going to pick up that AK that's closer to flames. They could have two right now, but they've chosen to go silently. Nurt's is keeping a very close eye on this. Great angle, and he finds Zywu. It's all flamesy. Tessas is set up. Even though he's low, he took that AWP, and Heroic find the round after that ridiculous one from Zywu. He only just managed to get the round win. Nobody stayed alive for Vitality, and it's ditto here. That's way closer than it should have been, I think is the primary thing that we're starting to build up, but my God. I mean, a good effort from Sphinx. Credit to him. A little bit better firepower on towards, I mean, either one of Flames or Zywu in that last fight. And who knows what could have happened. But Tessas, nice shot. And that's a huge, huge round to scalp away from Vitality. Because that was that full investment, they're now in a spot where 
Round number 11, the penultimate round of the half. It's just a low buy. Heroic can get an eight there. I mean, even if it is an eight to four half, that's fantastic. Getting just seven is already my, my kind of bare minimum that I always ask for. Yeah, fantastic. Wow. This heroic has shown up to play. They just seem to love it in Rio, especially Tessas and Shush. <laughs> they have uh, never failed to make a grand final from the major in 2022 to last year in 2023. Of course, this is a rematch of last year, at least organization-wise. Rosters are very different these days. No Dupree and Magisk or Zonic for Vitality. And of course, that was Cadian's heroic last year. Lot changes in a year. Lot changes in six months in Counter-Strike. And Heroic, this might be their best performance in an entire year at this point if they're to make the semi-finals straight up. Well, and they finish. Here's where we're going and... Thank God, right? No one's there. <laughs> it's a stack of the remaining four of Vitality over towards B and unfortunately it is just the wrong read. It's a gamble stack and oh, gamble's in the name, right? And this one doesn't pay off for them. I still feel like we should be going in for for some little, little, sort of a look in, right? If they can overwhelm and get a gun, that'd be nice. Shush, for one, two, two, three. Sphinx will trade. So there's an AK down, and that's something that absolutely we want to be taking in towards the next round. And it looks like Sphinx will just keep hold of it, which is fantastic. It's a silver lining in what is a pretty dark sky at the moment. Heroic yeah. eight and the potential of a nine, three, half. I mean, obviously, it was... A 10 2 half that Vitality started off with a Mirage and they were unable to close that. So we can't be talking about surely, you know, I, I said, and I hold my hands up, I said, surely this is unrecoverable from Heroic and how wrong I was. But I'm not going to say that again here in Towards Anubis, but it does feel very solid from Heroic. They just look like the better side. Angels, the game plan, the, you know, the mid to late round is fantastic from Kicks and I got, got to give a lot of credit towards him. I think he's calling yeah. a bit of a masterclass right now and all the players are stepping up around him. It's all you can really ask for and, you know, in particular for Vitality, the, the worrying thing is that we are just seeing a couple go missing by, by their standards. I mean, Flames, three and nine at the moment. I mean, not really where you want to be. I was six and six. It's two of your big impact players who are not having the impact. And as we always say, rankings and map percentage win rates don't hit those headshots. And it's been heroic that have been doing so great at that today. That nade is uh, a little bit shallow and actually heroic, looking like they wanted to take a straight up aim duel toward the A site early round there. They've already got main control, of course. The flash will ward them away. It's a big exchange of utility actually on that side of the map at the moment. And that's just trying to Put a few gaps in that smoke to see if there's a player over facing toward the pillar. Now creep at least one player back toward E box. But the setup here for Vitality is Sphinx on the angle and Mezzi to kick off of contact and holding main in the meantime. There's a flash to come through. Sphinx will avoid it. He's not shown his face yet and eventually he will. That's when Shush tries to trade and Mezzi has got his teammates back. 5v3. Bomb not committed either. On the, the back of Dexter, and he'll just wait. Kicks and looks in towards mid. Doesn't spot anything on that first engagement. As long as Vitality don't overface, this should be fine. As Dexter he is starting to move his way forward, but Sphinx doesn't need to peek her in towards water. That would most likely cost him his life. This is down to how quick's reaction for Dexter. He's got to spot the elbow. And he will get the kill. Sphinx, he tries to jiggle in to give himself an advantage. Doesn't work out, but Messi will answer back. And he will make another kill off the back of that too. Fantastic work. Nurts goes through the flames, tries to catch one of the reload, and it's not to be. Zywoo will close it. And an important round put on the board for Vitality right at the tail end of this half, but it is still an uphill battle in this series. Advantage is held by Heroic, and it's down to whether they can close it in the second half. Trav, it was tough. They were made to work for it, but I think Heroic did great work. They absolutely did. I mean, it was superb. It was sumptuous, and even with a few mistakes like that team kill we saw, they managed to figure out these late rounds brilliantly well, but I've got to give huge props to Mezzi for that final round, of course. He needs more of that toward that B side, and now, of course, on the T side, coming up next, because Vitality have got a lot of work to do. See you in a moment.
Well, second half underway. Heroic, it's safe to say it's a very good half out for them, but I think, Trav, we've learned our lesson not to look at that half and say, surely unwinnable. I made that mistake once already today, and it's not one I'm going to do again <laughs> here, but I think they've built pretty good foundations, Heroic. If they take a pistol round, this game could be getting towards the brink of extinction for Vitality. So it very much comes down to this T side now, though, for Vitality, so they get that arguably better side. Oh, it's pure aim duels for Vitality, though, and pure manpower. There was no utility boards up at this pistol whatsoever. But who needs util when you can hit headshots? That's pure Counter-Strike, baby. Zaiwu gets three. He got three on the CT pistol, and he's got three in this one, and he might even get four. He's pushing up for it. He will get deleted eventually, but all Tessas can play for is some kill reward now. Tessas. Constellations would be nice. He should get hit from the side. He actually, he gets tagged, but not dropped eventually. Just gets overwhelmed. And that'll be Vitality starting this half well. They needed that. And, and that's a great call, I think, from Apex as well. Let's just go for something simple. Pop. Nice, you know, up in your face on towards the A site. And let's just try and overwhelm. And I think they do a very, very solid job of it. Zywu with three kills to his name. Very, very aggressive. And exactly what we kind of wanted to see too, right? That's the, the way you lay down the gauntlet and say, you know, we're not out of this yet. We've still got some life left in us. So good work. We'll be a force buy from Heroic though. And yeah, traditionally, not a huge fan of these force buys. So we'll see if this one works in their favor. Yeah, this is... Uh... This is a surprising force buy. I would actually have much... I mean, you, I know you're on board with me on this one always. I would yeah. much prefer to see the one-round eco for the M4s in the third here. But if they win it, it'll be us that's uh, left with egg on our faces. And if more shots are hit like that, what did I mention about the moving deagle since the recent patch? That was why I think he was shift-walking. I'm not entirely sure if that was a perfect counter-strafe or not. Apex... No chance at all, and now the cavalry is going to be arriving. Vitality might be able to take the site here with these smokes, but the rotation is going to be thick and fast. Zywu only has this MAC-10, and he's got to worry about E-Box. He's going to manage to jump in for it now, but he's not going to be expecting the manpower, and the trades are thick oh. and fast, and Tess is hitting more bangers. Oh. And he's even going to find Mezzi as well. Tess says, I mentioned he stepped up in this event, and he's found another huge triple. I reluctantly add that to the successful tally of the <laughs> spreadsheet on CT Force Buys, but I think, you know, that's one of those ones why it's reluctant is deserved. Tessas does so damn well. The first one, slightly moving, but for those who maybe weren't aware, there was like a hidden update where the Deagle now just is a lot more accurate moving, generally speaking. I mean, you should go and check it out in kind of a, a DM server or something, right? It does have a lot more action on the move, and Tessas shows exactly that, but then a couple more behind it is massive. Getting four sport and, and losing like that for Vitality is really painful. Granted, they get a bomb plant though. So it does facilitate a, a somewhat okay, but I'll buy out for them. Oh, hello, nerds. He spotted one. That's an interesting choice to fight there though for Sphinx. He gets deleted. Yeah, that's pure destruction from nerds. And that's the nerds we know. Heroic, now they've got that opening kill. Be a bit circumspect to go for any more. Don't think we'll be going for any Banzai peaks anymore after that opening kill. They've got the 5v4 intact. They know if they win this round, Vitality are on the reforce. Force by wars have commenced. This is their opportunity to break it at the first time of asking. It would be 10-5 and likely 11-5. Actually, I mentioned they might not go for any extra peaks. They are staying assertive. It's surprising. But if it's going to work, then why not? Nurse has got through. And I don't think Zaru's seen the second player of Kicksan working his way through. Or he's going for a little bit of a half peak either. So no intel for Vitality and Heroic are going to get a lot of that coming in right now. Tessus holding standard angle towards CT. Nerds activates well. Zaru gets caught. He was actually caught in two mines as well, and that's where him crossing was huge. Bomb will not go down. Tess great work once again. What a performance he's putting up in towards this map. This bomb's still struggling to go down, and Tess might have something to do with it. Second time of asking, kicks on, gets him behind. It is carnage on the site, and it's all down to flames. A one versus five needed five. for the youngster. Surely not to be. Uh, and it's sure she sees it off. A bomb plan again. It's a small little silver lining, but it's just not getting good enough for Vitality. That's Heroic now up to double digits. Double the rounds of Vitality 2. 
As soon as Flamesy picked up the M4, it had five bullets in the chamber and your heart just sinks. Like, yeah. even though he was in such a tough position where he was unlikely to do anything more anyway, just the fact that he got nothing really to fight with. Uh, with that A1S. Right here is when he switches. And then you see the five bullets. Has to go through a smoke. Walks into Shush. Another brilliant round from Heroic. Great rotations. Great proactivity around the map. And that's just something we did not see from Vitality on their CT side as much. And at least when they did go for it, it didn't work. Out for a round victory. And as I said, that has now broken the force by wars. Vitality on three Deagles and two Tech Nines. 11-5 is on the table for Heroic unless Vitality can have one of their stars appear out of nowhere and already one of them is in the dirt. Yeah, Zaiwu, he's, he's not being terrible, but he's definitely having his issues. I mean, 10 and 10 by his standards is definitely not what we're looking towards. Especially, you know, when we look towards the Mongols game, it's like 41 and 18, map one. You know, ridiculous numbers he was putting up. Nuts, backside one, make that two as well. Tessas comes up to bat and a home run for the first and a second behind it. The eco put to bed with ease, flawlessly. No casualties, not even breaking a sweat in that one. An attack pause called as Xtas wants to get in towards his conversation, but Trav, they are running out of opportunities. Vitality are ceasing to exist right now. They've completely fallen off a cliff. From 10-2 up on Mirage to lose that the way they did, and then to only get five rounds on Anubis, their pick. Outstanding from Heroic. It was first G of the GG after they made that comeback, but they're getting very close to the handshake now and a spot in the semi-final straight up. Tessez has been a monster thus far and that is the test says that heroic need alongside the consistency of nerds and dexter as you can see across the board sure kicksand's not having a great game kills wise but it doesn't matter when your stars are performing like this 19 and 9 for him yeah what a map what a map it's the two Long-standing members of Heroic who have both had standout maps because Shush was fantastic in towards map one and Tessa's map two. But also, to be fair to him, Tessa's also great map one as well. He had 20 kills in that one. And he'll come through. I don't think that was the sort of damage that was meant to be happening. But the, the main thing is just Nurse getting out of there. He was he quite committed to that fight in towards water and it was getting a little precarious. Didn't quite have the support he wanted either. So he dips away. And I just reclaim a little bit more of a passive e-box control. Like Vitality are just going through the motions right now. And we know t is very possible to respond, but look at this from Heroic once again. They take B main, but it's on a different timing this time. That's what makes it so hard to predict for Vitality. It was earlier round previously. It's time for Heroic, it was around about 55 seconds on the clock going for that. And already it's forced Vitality into the A site. Shush is here, it's going to be at least a decent nade to ward them away that there is presence here. A right click smoke to possibly allow them to get toward Pillar. And Shush, he knows all he needs to do is stay alive. Maybe grab one kill. Hide back toward heaven, wait for a rotation, and that rotation is in thanks to Dexter. They're going to go for a double swing, and that is insane from Dexter on towards Zyru. Mad peak and a mad kill. A great left-right click incendiary is going to land on the back of the site. It's going to force Flamesy into the open, but the bomb is down. 2v3, and look at them. They're going toward heaven. They're walking heaven up against Shush. He knows what's happening, though, and Mezzi will get removed. Flamesy caught in no man's land. Heroic have got Vitality's number right now, and they keep on dialing it. Match, series, point, heroic. What a showing coming through from the boys. They are looking absolutely brilliant. And they're just one final hurdle away from taking a 2-0 and booking this spot directly in towards the semi-finals. Of course, we've already touched on it. It won't be the end of the road for Vitality, which is the good thing. They, they still, of course, have this opportunity to, to even take the tournament under their belt, but they've got to go through the quarterfinals first. And I mean, at this rate, something quite... Special is going to happen for Vitality. I mean, we're talking a scout, double glill, double AK, and even in a couple of bodies, I mean, Flames and Sphinx. Not a lot of util for them to work with, and none in the case of Sphinx. This does feel like last chance saloon. All the Vitality boys who have really struggled. I mean, basically, from half time on Mirage onwards, it's been a one sided showing. Impeccable 
from Heroic. I mentioned odd results can sometimes come through in these qualification games where, uh, of course, you're already in the playoffs, but you have a chance of that semi-final. Vitality won't be panicking. They're still in the event, but they'll definitely be re-watching this demo and looking back at a lot that's gone wrong. Map 1 should have been in their favour comfortably. Map 2, they've been purely outplayed overall, not just for one half. And the buy they've got in this round is already so rough to save the game. Lamesy, double smoke, Zyru scout flash. They have just nothing to work with, Neo. Yeah, this is asking so much of them. Messi will creep his way forward, kicks and... Oh no, Apex goes because he thinks Messi's holding and he wasn't. The communication is so off for Vitality and that's just been a summary basically of this map. And just at that time, Inert swings out, finds flames, looks for Zai Wu, caught by the clock. <laughs> Classic Zai Wu things, but Shush will answer back. One man to save face and it's not to be. 13 to 5 and a 2-0 for Heroic. They book their spots directly directly in towards that semi-finals with a masterful Anubis. I can't quite believe I've seen that level from Heroic. It's brilliant. They've been so quiet all year. And don't forget, this Heroic came through the closed qualifiers.